Let's give an Austin welcome to our host. You know her from Archer, Criminal Minds, Whose Line Is It Anyway, Friends, and so much more, Aisha Tyler. Uh, good morning. First of all, that's my favorite introduction I've ever had. It's time for some fun and some arguing. It's typically what I say right before Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, guys, it's Sunday. I know I'm hungover. I'm assuming you are as well. So we're going to have some fun and some arguing, and uh, it's going to go great. And if I sound like I feel like because I do. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is my third great debate for Sci-Fi Channel, which uh, Sci-Fi Channel, Sci-Fi Wire, and the entire family of Sifi. And uh, I'm super excited to be here. And uh, we are gonna have a great conversation. This is just, we're gonna talk about geek stuff. It's Sunday at, uh, at too early to be awake. And uh, th we have a really amazing panel here. Very smart, very funny, and all of them uh, drinking alcoholic beverages, which is how this should be done. I don't know why we never thought of this prior. Why have we never been drinking on stage for the great debate until today? Uh, you know what, you come to Austin and you learn new things. So if you want to follow along at home or in the audience, uh, you can uh, use the hashtag sci-fi great debate and uh, has, uh, hashtag uh, X -X XSW. Everyone is gonna get a chance to vote on the winners. This is up to you guys um, because we're just up here to chat and, uh, and uh, amuse ourselves, and it's up to you to let us know who won the conversation. So, right now, I'm gonna introduce our panelists who are all delightful people, all of them delightful. This first guy, uh, smart, funny, one of the writers and stars of Showtime Spike Money, Monday, super excited that there was almond milk up in the green room, guys. It's the little things that make you happy when you're hungover. Yasser Lester, ladies and gentlemen, Yasser Lester. Right here. Oh my God, no, yeah, okay, you know where you're supposed to sit. Good, good, I, I don't work here. Uh, next, a fantastic comedian you've seen on Conan. She's got her own Comedy Central special. If I say your name wrong, punch me in the nuts. Megan Gailey, did I get it right? Oh, thank God. Yeah! Oh my yeah! God, this enthusiasm. I can feel that enthusiasm in my actual pelvis. Star of Netflix, Grace and Frankie, Mystery Science Theater 3000, co-creator of The New Negroes. Uh, his, ha his Twitter handle is my favorite of all time, Bar Baron Von Black. Baron Von! In case you don't know that Baron Von is black. There he is. And finally, MTV VJ, co-host of the Homophilia podcast, my favorite name for a podcast, uh, and editor at large for Esquire magazine, Dave Holmes! Dave Holmes! Dave Holmes. All right, you guys. I'm already so entertained. <laughs> Literally nothing else has to happen today uh, for this panel to be a success. So I'm gonna present a topic, which debaters are gonna square off arguing, they're gonna make their argument, I'm gonna open up to the entire panel to tag, just to tag each other's I think this is the first time we've ever done this with all com comedians. Oh, so no. feel well. free to injure each other verbally okay. as much as possible. Great. Um, uh, you're gonna make your argument, we'll open it up to everybody at the end. At the end, you guys get to decide who won this conversation. You're gonna hold up your panel, your paddles, with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Oh my God, God bless you lady in the front who clearly wasn't Brenda. drinking until 45 minutes ago. Thank, oh God, I'm in love with every single one of you right now. So you'll hold it up, thumbs up or thumbs down, and then just uh, whatever, it doesn't matter, just pick a side. Just make sure to hold up your panel and, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. So first of all, we're gonna have a little icebreaker to get us warmed up before the, it, for, before the real intense stuff begins. All we right? only have 38 minutes left. Um, guys, I'm gonna be up here until 4 p.m. today because I don't know if you've noticed, but the booze is free. We're never leaving this stage. Never leaving this stage. Um, so just to get us warmed up, here is the first, this is, obviously South by Southwest is a con about something. I don't know, <laughs> music, technology, Places to drink for free. I don't know what this con is about. I don't know, maybe it's a whole con about people riding on birds. I have no idea. <laughs> but we're gonna just talk about music because is, there is also some music going on at this, at this uh, conference. So what is the worst band name ever? Bonus points if it sounds like an alien planet. Uh, yeah, sir, you start. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, Coheed and Cambria. Oh, um, yikes. First of all, it does sound like it's in space. Number two, they named the band after a comic book they wrote themselves. Like, it's like the nerdiest thing I can imagine. It's mm -hmm. like naming yourself after a sword you bought. You know what I mean? Like, it's just whack to me. I'm sorry. All of that I felt won. like a Next, really good idea, Next topic, actually. I won. I, I, 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, that all felt great. I was like, yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. Okay, Megan. I'm really happy that you won. Um, I also, you guys are a mother-daughter, right? Yeah. Well, I read right. your names are on your thing. Um, she, no, that she, would have been She's not such even actually up here. She's just reading people's name tags. She cares no, not I at all. No, I just love that you're a mother-daughter both drinking. Um, yeah, that's cool. And then here to watch us. Uh, yes. <laughs> Some Winning might say Sunday it's a problem. So hard. I, nope, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't, Bre Brenda and Heidi. You little blonde babes. Um, you have actively avoided answering I this have, question. I have an answer. <laughs> with it. I'm trying to engage with the crowd. Okay. okay, so my answer is Chumba Wumba. Yeah, you laughed. It's a stupid name. <laughs> um, it sounds like you're saying something that's a real word, but you have food in your mouth. And anything that's like food in your mouth sounding, I think is gross and embarrassing. I did do some research. <laughs> they are great social justice warriors, but like, f off. Uh, uh, uh. You should have named it some PETA and we would have gotten behind it, pets too. But you named it Chumbawamba and you know, now you're dead to me. I won. She did. Uh, she totally uh, won. She totally won, bro. All know. right, Baron, Baron. Uh, I'm going to be the first person that doesn't announce that I won. Uh, my band name is Toad the Wet Sprocket <laughs> because it sounds disgusting. It sounds like Toad is a verb, and it's something <laughs> that you do to a wet sprocket. Yeah. Either way, it should be illegal. <laughs> That's how <laughs> I'm runner-up. <laughs> All right, so far I'm still the winner. Keep going. And super humble. Dave, how about you? Uh, for me, the worst band name of all time is Metallica. Oh. Ooh, controversial. Is that, how is dare that you? Like Judaica for metal? <laughs> Are we talking like really heavy mezuzahs and. Uh, oh. The thing is, I used to be scared of metal kids because their bands were like dark and had big hair and like angular like logos and stuff. But then when Metallica came out and like the tough kids were going like, Metallica, I was like, oh no, you're, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> Did you just say um, angular bolos? Logos. Oh, logos. I was like, are they all wearing bad ties? Angular I don't understand. Ties? No. What but band are you looking at? It doesn't sound like an alien planet, but it does sound like uh, whatever they were mining in Avatar. <laughs> oh, unobtainium? <laughs> unobtainium, <laughs> yeah. thank you. <laughs> We should and just walk off. It's never going to Anyway, if anyone wants to talk about Avatar, I'm here. Oh, my God. <laughs> Nobody won that. Uh, but oh, somebody, I, definitely, wait a somebody definitely lost. Okay. Metallica is the greatest metal band Remember of all time. Remember when Metallica I actively you. went after Napster for like five yes. years? Dude, and how Metallica is the greatest was. metal band no. of all time. I will <laughs> wrestle but everybody in this room. But we're not talking about the band. We're talking about the name. I don't care, man. Don't talk. But well, we can talk about the band too. Do you remember when they like made you pay money to watch their therapy session well, that yeah. sucks. <laughs> in a documentary? That sucks. That is some balls. Actually, I'm Metallica sorry. is the best. <laughs> I love them so much, man. I really? Candy, I literally have. I'm, I'm like about to cry. I have so many feelings about Metallica. Uh, but you, it you know, first, also, it was the first metal album I bought. Oh, I'm I sorry. met Dave Headfield in a in a bar when I was 14. We talked about like underground, like hardcore punk. Yeah. And I. Tried to have sex with him, but I didn't realize that because I was 14, so I didn't know that's what I was trying to do, but I was really right. trying to just, like, move on him. And I was like, if I was an adult, this would be happening, but I'm just going to get on the bus right now. Yes. Metallica is my entire format of stuff, man. I have so many feelings. <laughs> I won that debate. Yeah, that's, you know, <laughs> thumbs up for me. But just right, think, about the, think about the conversation where they were like, Metallica? <laughs> Did you know that they thought about Metallica? Metallica? Or, yeah. <laughs> the Metallica. or when they got home that night, like some 14-year-old black girl tried to have sex with me. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that I'm I sure got, he still remembers that to this day. <laughs> to this day. I gotta hit better at guitar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. Topic one: the actual debate. No, no. This is sci-fi, and everybody at NBC, Comcast, Universal. I, uh, this is my favorite thing I've ever done for your organization. <laughs> Why were we not drinking at Comic-Con? I don't know why I didn't figure out that that was going to make it so much better. Here we go. Topic one. This is for Megan and Baron. Megan and Baron, who is the worst villain to work for? Darth Vader or the Joker? You get okay. 60 seconds to make your case, and then everyone's going to tag your stuff. Uh, I'm Megan first. first. Megan first. Oh, good. The, the part I really prepared for. Uh, 
the stuff I really wrote down. Uh -huh. um, okay, so I have the Joker. Oh, someone wooed. Um, <laughs> so that's not a good start. Uh, the, it's tough because there's a lot of iterations. I feel like the first one I need to address is Jared Leto. Uh, obviously, Jared Leto Joker would be a terrible boss. Um, just asking you if bits were funny. Uh, <laughs> just not good. I feel like Heath, Led <laughs> Heath Ledger Joker, you'd be like hard pressed. You'd be like, why well, want to f my boss? Um, <laughs> but he did like carve someone's face. <laughs> but I know that Joker dick is good. Um, honestly, what worries me the most... <laughs> they did say keep it PG-13, and I feel like I'm in it. it. I'm in it. Too I'm in it. You were 14 at a bar. 13-year-olds are trying to get Joker dick. Um, <laughs> So my concern about him, honestly, is that he has no family. And a man with no spouse or children makes a great NBA coach, <laughs> Tom Thibodeau, but makes a terrible, a terrible boss because they're always on their phones. Look at you just texting, emailing. You're bad too. I see you cutie back row in the yellow shirt. Your hair looks good, but you'd be a bad boss. Just. <laughs> It's Sunday, who are you emailing? You know, like if the Joker had a wife and kids to be like, we went to the farmer's market, he'd like not be bothering you all the time. Also, do you have to dress as a clown? That sucks. <laughs> and he's just a loose cannon. You'll like rob a bank and then he burns the money and you're like, well, what the f uh, This is all we worked on for the last six months. It's like the head of LinkedIn being like, nope, we're linked out. Um, <laughs> I knew that would kill. I, uh, <laughs> I don't think he would be good. So bad, bad boss. But if it's if it's Heath Ledger, would have sex, but alive, not dead. Uh, would have sex but, with him alive. It's nice to end that. It's nice to end that on a high note. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for I clarifying. Think so. <laughs> uh, okay, Baron. Oh yeah. Okay, I can't follow that. <laughs> but um, I believe Darth Vader would be a bad boss, mainly because hard to read. Um, <laughs> really can't tell what he's thinking at any moment. And you know, you gotta ask bosses for favors. Can I have Sunday? I can't tell what's going on. And you know, a lot of what it means to work for somebody is being able to, to talk about them behind their backs. And most of the time, if a person's upset at you and they wanna hurt you physically, they have to be in your face. Vader could be across the room, you know what I mean? You could be, you could be in the lunchroom, he can overhear you in the hallway, and then you're gone, you know, just like, uh, Darth Vader, Darth, where's Wayne? Uh, 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 and then you're in space, so no one can hear you choke. Uh, wow. I, I'm, I cannot say enough how much I'm enjoying what's happening right now. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, oh yeah, does anybody want to tag that? Well, I, I mean, I just, you know, feel free to hurt, injure yourself. Support me, Dave. Yeah, uh, Darth Vader would be a bad boss, but he would only make you sit through his origin story once. <laughs> you know what I mean? How many times am I going to have to watch Bruce Wayne's parents die? Yeah. That's it's too many. Yeah. Exactly. You had to take it dark, didn't you? Darth Vader yeah. has no riddles. He's not asking you about devils no. and pale moonlight at all. No. I'll say this. Vader, black boss, you probably get to go home earlier. Joker, very white, working too hard. No, Vader, <laughs> Vader, is, the, Vader is like Elvis. Yeah, he's the white man with the black voice. That's but uh, mask comes off. Yeah. It's somebody different. Uh, Joker is James Old Jones I'm in going, the sheets. I'm going purely on mask. Yeah, no. Jamie <laughs> Christensen in the, in the streets. <laughs> Joker have... is doing white face too. Oh, yeah, 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 right. but he's doing white face on top of white face. He, I know to be like I've got to be whiter. <laughs> A wild choice. But also Vader's like just build the thing or I'll kill you. And then yeah. the Joker's like where's the riddle? Exactly. I'm like, uh, I guess technically that's the Riddler. Joker is a micromanager. <laughs> you know, Vader's a big picture guy. Well, yeah. but... leaves you alone. Knows what you're good at. What you if the Joker's at? like, hey, I need you to go pick up more playing cards for my crime leader? Absolutely. <laughs> You'll get it. Leader. I guess if you're uh, someone it. that you're now, like, I now I'm going to revise my statement to Comcast uh, Universal about this being <laughs> my favorite thing I've ever done, and point out that uh, five comedians on a stage is just a bag of wet cats. <laughs> 
Uh, everybody, meow, meow. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, the, the two people who actually debated here were <laughs> Megan and Farron. So uh, who won that conversation? Megan? She's the Joker. Joker. She, yes, Baron. Seriously consider. Wow. Brenda. And now to have paddles wow. out for Baron. Wow. Yeah, People I mean, like Megan won that. I don't thought. even. I don't. I don't. Ha I'm not going to count because yeah. I'm hungover. But thanks for that, guys. All right. Yes. Well done, Megan. 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 Uh, although it was a, it was a very vigorous was debate, wasn't it? Yeah. Thank it you was. for sparing my feelings. So I, you should yeah, appreciate I was, that. And, you, and you've got that sweater on. You're winning. You're just winning life, bro. You don't need to win a debate. <laughs> Here we go. Neck. Um, what is that called? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Here we go, topic two. This is for everyone on the panel. Uh, uh, it, when we were kids, there was stuff we thought was awesome. Now that we're adults, we realize it was stupid. I mean, yeah, yeah right? Through, through the lens of adulthood, mortgage paying, and, uh, and um, alcohol ingestion. So, with that in mind, which 80s toy is the most overrated? And we're gonna start oh. at this end of the panel Great. and go Ooh. that way. Which 80s Great. toy is the most overrated toy, yeah. uh, Dave? Uh, I have got to go with the Snoopy snow cone machine. Anyone? <laughs> no, great, good. Something you've never heard of? Terrific. Um, oh, okay, there it is. There it is. So this is a little house where you put in a, an ice cube and then you laboriously crank it to turn it into smaller ice cubes. And <laughs> then you pour some sort of flavor syrup on it that you will spill and lose and get all over your mom's Formica counter. And then if you want to go and get replacement uh, uh, flavor packets, too bad, there's no <laughs> such thing. Um, you, you have to like go to the store and get soda and pour soda on it, and then you just have a little soda with tiny ice cubes. Um, also, there's no compelling reason for Snoopy and Snow Cone to be together. They, I don't remember that being part of Snoopy's canon. Um, there is, I, we do have a- Snoopy's canon! Right? We don't, I mean, he was Joe Cool, he was the World War I flying ace. I don't remember anything about Snow Cones. Um, it did have a really good jingle, and we do have a clip of the jingle, and I want you, I don't know if the, uh, the acoustics are gonna be good enough for you to hear it, but there is an ad lib from a child in it oh, that I just want you to, I, I hope we have it. Let's just. There, there's a child in the background just going, yummy. <laughs> like the most defeated yummy. <laughs> like just, it's good, I guess, is why you should buy it. It's good. I don't know, do you have any better ideas? Anyway, it's overrated. Don't get it. Uh, you can't, because it's been out of soda, circulation. Tiny decade. soda. Yeah. My favorite thing that's ever happened to me in the last <laughs> 90 seconds. Baron. <laughs> My um, choice is slip and slide. Oh. Uh, I know. Boom. Oh, some of you are upset? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, booing then you. you must have not grown up in the desert <laughs> where you lay it over rocks <laughs> and then don't wear shorts for 30 years. Slip and slide seems like it's fun. You can even tell from this picture. Get on a grassy knoll. That's what you need. <laughs> you don't need rocks in New Mexico deserts. Your knees will bleed and you'll wonder why. But your mom's not there. So anyway, this is, it's just lubricated plastic. I, it's, it's the cheapest, it's, I just imagine the pitch meeting being like, all right, what if we took a bunch of trash bags? <laughs> And a water hose <laughs> it writes itself. That's what a slip and slide is, a magic water slide. Only if it's, no. That's... Also, there's an entire body of work on YouTube that involves people on versions of slip and slides yeah. Yeah. almost dying. Yes. Exactly. Crocodile mile, death. <laughs> yeah. This kid you can't see right now, but this is nothing but bruises. His whole chest <laughs> is nothing but bruises. Just going over this, these sharp blades of grass, acting like he's having fun, but he was yeah. paid. And you say it's lubricated plastic, it's just wet plastic. It's not, it, it's it's wet not plastic. KY. It doesn't actually, I never actually slipped. Yeah, it um, doesn't soften or anything. Or slid. Yeah. It, I just kind of fell fe like chest first on the thing. I'm like, and now I'm hurting and wet. That's what a slip and slide is. Wait, can it I should add, be called the wet pain. Can, can I add, like, I've never seen someone with that much arch in their back. Yeah. <laughs> Ever on a slip and slide. Like, he's a very long arm. He's, 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 he's demonstrating, degrees. The, he's actually demonstrating the right way to do a slip and slide. He's like, <laughs> yeah, raise he's all of your extremities away yeah. from the surface, or you will die. By the way, right out of frame is the curb and the street <laughs> the of his cul-de-sac. Absolutely. Because white people that own slip and slides all live in cul-de-sacs. That's true, yeah. Okay. 
That would be a fun way to curb people, though. Right? Look at this. You need, like, dance classes for to do this. <laughs> Keep Guys, your arms and legs This up. is act three of the movie Suspiria. He's just doing ballet right now. <laughs> and then okay. what are you, you going to do if you have an Audi? You know what I, I mean? I, I like the girl at the oh. top who's like, you go, boy. <laughs> I'm going to stay over here uninjured. <laughs> I think it's rude that the one boy went first. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Let, right. There's like a four-year-old child. Like, <laughs> let her go. No, he's mansplaining the slip and slide right now. I was like, yeah. this is how it's done, ladies. Just to show you, don't or worry about it. Or is he just paving what I did. the way for a strong woman to come? No, right. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah right. because he was the way. like, Make oh, a you want to go? Get on your to knees, take girl. Charge. Get he's on trying your to, knees. to break the glass curve. I want to point out, we have end. like nine topics, and we're almost out of time. We've done two. Oh, OK. Um, so mine is the Easy Bake Oven. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, so here's the thing. I don't know if you guys grew up privileged like me, but we had a <laughs> f***ing oven. Uh, <laughs> we had one in our house, and you could put stuff in it all the time. Uh, <laughs> didn't come in a box, just was a part of our house, and my mom would, you know, loved me, and we would make stuff together, and then we would put it in the oven, and then it tasted good, as opposed to this, which always came out as wet dirt. Uh, <laughs> The food is bad. Where's <laughs> also you need parental supervision. They're making it seem like this girl went rogue. She didn't. Uh, there is definitely like a mad divorced dad in the background <laughs> that you're not seeing. I think it's obviously sexist. Why are we trying to make girls do work? Like this is a job. This is All a work. job. Yeah. This is a job. People like every girl in a rom com like makes cupcakes. And it's like, that's a job. This girl shouldn't have a job. She should be reading. <laughs> but instead, she's making bad cakes. Uh, also, okay, because, what if this was a tiny library set? If this was a tiny library that? set, I'd be like, bring a gay man in and he'll guard the books. <laughs> and, and she's on the computer masturbating. Um, I'm coming to your house right after this. <laughs> also, by the way, if you remember, the way that the Easy Bake Oven worked was a light bulb. Yes! Dude, you can't bake shit with a light bulb. No, it was bad technology. I got one for Christmas. I was really excited, and then it didn't work, and my brothers made fun of me. Um, <laughs> they were like, you can't even cook right. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, if I had a nickel every time I heard that in I my know. actual life. So maybe life. I have my own <laughs> dark memories. Why are they throwing Betty Crocker in this? Uh, yeah. I actually made a great hollandaise with it. You, you know mind. what? Yes, sir, you <laughs> stop that immediately. Everyone's like, please stop. You stop that immediately and you pitch your joke. What is your toy? Uh, my toy is the worst of all time. It's a Hungry Hungry Hippos. I don't know how anybody oh. sold it. I don't know how anybody bought it. You guys realize there are games that take skill. Hungry Hungry Hippos is someone throws a bunch of balls in the middle of something and you just go, <laughs> I won. That's it. That's it. That's the entire game. It, it, if anything, to me, it feels like something you would give, like, a domestic abuser to, like, get out their rage. It's just something that you hit and then go, like, I feel a little bit better now. But, like, in terms of, like, operation, that's a game. You know what I'm saying? You got to be like, uh-uh, you know. Anyway, y'all don't get it. <laughs> anyway, y'all love I'm Hungry Hungry Hippos. In, I'm I won. In. Let's and, move on. And as mentioned, which was Baby Alive. I don't know if, everybody, if anybody's as old as me and remembers Baby Alive, which was oh, yeah. a, a baby that ate... Uh, like yeah. like and baby oh, alive yeah. baby food that you pee, that came in yeah. the same packets that you got the snow yeah. cone shit in uh -huh. so like it would eat for about three minutes and then you would just have a dirty sticky ugly plastic <laughs> white baby sitting in the corner of your room yeah. covered in pink stuff yeah attracting yeah flies. and then you try to feed it real people food and then you have ants so yeah. uh, <laughs> as, as uh, you know a baby alive is how you get ants all right I'm just gonna stand over each person uh, who who thought Dave uh, Dave if uh, Dave if you think Dave won. Okay. All right, all right. A Solid smattering. showing. Baron, if you think Baron won. Wow. Haven't right, worn shorts right, for 20 right. years. <laughs> Megan, sorry, if you think Megan won. Okay. Gasser, if you think Gasser yeah. won. Let's see ya! <laughs> <laughs> all right! Baron got I? that one. Baron Wait, got that there one. There you go! Had it. Baron had it. <laughs> that guy's like, I'm a domestic abuser! Yeah. <laughs> I got two! <laughs> I just like his that wife, Yasser is his, his own hype man. Like, Let's see the bitch <laughs> for me. Where are my hungry hippos? Get them up. Okay, here we go. We literally used all of our time for two and a half topics. I'm really proud of you guys. Here's We're the jetty. next topic. 
It's the 20th anniversary of a classic film, my friends, that filmed right here in Austin, Texas, the movie Office Space. Uh, and right over there, you can sit in a recreation of Michael Scott's desk from The Office if you have nothing else to do with your life. So, or if you're super drunk at 12.30 in the afternoon. So, here is the topic for Yasser and Dave. Which one is the ultimate workplace comedy staple Office Space or The Office, Yasser, kick it off! Oh, yeah! Um, <laughs> cool. Your boy says Office Space is the ultimate <laughs> workplace comedy. Uh, one, because what's his, uh, uh, the Middle Eastern dude, what's his name in the movie? I forgot. Well, we're not going to yell it out uh, now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, someone make a racist Somebody guess. Somebody Google uh, that. Yeah. Welcome so to Racist Guest next? with Yasser Number Lester. one, the movie, the movie exemplified diversity in film, all right? <laughs> they had that dude, and we were making progress. Uh, the homie- His name was Samir. Sam is Samir. That Samir. Yeah, and, but I see, just Googled that with my mind. But see? <laughs> it's called a room Because they could have just gone with a Patel or something. This is pre, like, Google out there. So he was like, I'm gonna go find a Middle Eastern dude, <laughs> name him that. Shout out to Mike Judge. Number two, <laughs> Diedrich Bader and the wig and the mustache, incredible. It, it predicted the rise of cryptocurrency, low key, because that's what they were doing, was stealing money. Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah, uh, number four, launch the career of a little lady I like to call Jennifer Aniston, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> she was nothing until <laughs> office space, so. Thank you to Mike Judge. But more than that, it's, I don't know. I just feel like if we're gonna do the debate, the Office American version, like the reason we should be mad at it is because it gave us more Ricky Gervais, which none of us need. So that's why I choose <laughs> Office Space. <laughs> God, you guys are just low key murdering me from the inside <laughs> out. <laughs> Dave. Well, I choose The Office. Uh, because uh, a variety of reasons. First and foremost, uh, it gave the world John Krasinski, uh, who is an actor who is constantly surprising me uh, when I find myself masturbating to his men's health cover. <laughs> like, every single time it's a shock. Like, this guy really? Um, just I, low key, low key masturbating though. Yeah. Not like, not putting your back into it, but just like low key watching yeah, TV. Just when like, I do it, I call it a quiet place. <laughs> uh, I cannot with you people. I cannot. Uh, Anytime I, um, you get too loud, he's like, shh. <laughs> not Jack Ryan? Okay. This is, uh, The Office is a show that has kept me on the straight and narrow. Uh, weed got legal in California right around the time that it started. And I had some, and I watched an episode of The Office, and it went into a, a, like a mental spiral of how I'm the Michael Scott in my world. And it was, you know how like people see, watch The Wall and freak out? I freaked out to an episode of The Office, and I haven't smoked pot since, so I, I owe them that. I take my hug back, I take um, my hug back. Pardon me? Take that hug yeah, back yeah, from you. Yeah, I think you should. <laughs> I should um, to Also, uh, first, uh, really, I think the main reason that I love The Office is that The Office is a show that America said, we love this, why can't there be less of it? You know what I mean? Like, it went on two seasons too long, and now we have Hulu and Netflix and shows that have six-episode seasons, as they should. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The end. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're gonna, I'm going to go down here, uh, and we're going to vote. Come uh, on. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, I have nothing. Yasser. Please. Hold him up for you. Yes! Oh, two hands and a beer you got oh, in row right. three. What? My man. What? Two hands and a beer. It's my Saturday you, night, yo. You. And Dave, for Dave. Oh, oh, it was a valiant effort, no, but I think Yasser has that yeah, one. Sir, now, la ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited about this next one. I brought Ooh, presents. Yeah. I brought presents. All right, so as I as I distribute these gifts yep. to uh, to the panel, we're gonna we're gonna discuss a very important topic. Austin is a food town, uh, mm. and by food town, I mean there's just a lot of food. Like whatever, you're like, <laughs> I'm waiting for my Uber, standing on my lime, and then there's a guy in a truck trying to make me buy a taco. Uh, Wait, can I ask a question? Is Austin the keep it weird place? Yes, okay. yes, keep Austin it's weird. One of can, them. can I say it's not that weird? It's like, oh, no. I'm like staying at the W. That's not very weird. But on the way here, I was like, there, a guy came up to my car and I was like, is he panhandling? He had a sign, I couldn't see the sign. And, it, and uh, he didn't have a cup or his handout, he yeah, just yeah. had a sign. 
And then I turned around and it just, it said, fuck Trump. And I was like, well, I feel like a, a majority of people probably agree, but it was the way. He was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, bro, you got feelings. I see you, I see you. So yeah, I felt, I felt like okay, Austin was really weird. like that's living weird. up. It was great, right. it was super weird. I have yet to, if someone would throw something at me right now, I so, would love it. It was super weird. So uh, we're gonna talk about something we all love from our childhood, which is uh, cereal. Everybody has yeah. a favorite cereal, right? Uh, we are going to debate right now, what is the greatest cereal of all time? Woo! The G-Code. What is the G-Code, ladies and gentlemen? Woo! We're going to start with the Oscar just because his hype man is out already. Woo! Okay, <laughs> all right. So reveal, my, reveal your okay. cereal and my then make cereal, your argument. My cereal, number one, ain't even available in most places. You can get it off Amazon. Rice Krispies Treat Cereal. What? Yes. Not a lot of people remember it. We all remember a Rice Krispie, you know? We're always snapping, we're crackling, we're popping. Rice Krispies Treat Cereal just decided one day, they're like, yo, you know how you was making desserts out of us? What if we made you a cereal out of that? And you're at home like, wait a second, I didn't even know. And they're like, this is the first inception. You know what I'm saying? We got you. <laughs> <laughs> and anytime you add marshmallows to any cereal, low key it makes it good. Except they did it with like Fruit Loops or something recently. When you're like, okay, this that was, that's is, we're, too much. We're, we're dying. That's too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, clean the water and your Flint crack cocaine doesn't and, need like, additional yeah, cocaine. Let's Relax. Get the marshmallows out of Fruit Loops. Yeah, I uh, see you. That being said, Rice Krispie Treat cereal is literally just clumps of marshmallows uh, forming bigger Rice Krispie Treats craters, and nothing is better if you eat it. For more than a week, a doctor will have to cut off one of your legs, and uh, because you'll have diabetes. But that's that commitment, said, man. That's commitment that to cereal. That's delicious, and I suggest everyone get it off Amazon. <laughs> Megan. Okay, Brenda and Heidi have fresh drinks. What's up, gals? Okay, so I'm. I'm so on, proud of you guys. I, I know. I love red wine so early. Bull. <laughs> um, so I'm obviously wrong, but mine is Golden Grams. Okay, I had what we would describe as a hot mom, and <laughs> she was doing a lot of, no, we're having fruits and vegetables, and this was a naughty cereal, as we would call it. God, what a Christian household. And <laughs> I do think Golden Grahams is very good because it makes the milk taste good. It also, as it gets soggy, it's still delicious. Um, yeah, I mean, this is obviously a very white woman named Megan Pick, and I'm a little embarrassed, but I just want you to know that it was in Indiana, and this was as wild as I could get. <laughs> okay, am I? I... <laughs> oh. Is it real? Thank you very much. <laughs> thank, uh, is it thank real? Thank you, Dougie Fresh. Um, now, you might see that this is a, not a real box. I'm the only person up here without a real box of cereal because Waffle Crisps is so damn good, they had to take that shit off the market. <laughs> People were eating the shit out of this. They are like, there's an opioid crisis coming. I know it. And so they took this. Uh, every bite is a breakfast. <laughs> Every bite in itself is a breakfast. I don't know what else to say. No, just, I crip for crisp. I feel like the selling point is that waffle crisp is better than actual waffles. It, oh. no, not necessarily. Oh, necessarily, bro. <laughs> because I, I remember having a waffle and thinking, what if I could just make a bowl of this? And then somebody did it for me. This is a point where it feels like they have a tap into my brain and they made this cereal. It, first of all, texture, fantastic. Stays crispy all the way through the milk. You know how some cereals get soggy by the end of it, and you're like, mm, I guess I'll just avoid this and drink the milk. Not Waffle Crisps. All the way to the end, it is your friend. <laughs> all Don't the way to the end, get Waffle, waffle Crisps is your friend. This honestly yeah. looks like a cereal conference from 1998. As you're like, like, here's a cereal of the future. Good. <laughs> I promise it's coming. And it was ahead of its time, and that's why it's no longer with us. <laughs> This is the Andy Richter controls the universe of cereals. <laughs> <laughs> Very Literally, this Very is inside. the Heat Vision and Jack yeah, heat of, vision of and cereals. Jack. Of cereals. Oh my God. 
Okay, Dave. I don't right, know. You know, yeah. I was going to say Captain Crunch, but I still have PTSD from the soft palate carnage yes. oh, that yeah. 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 from yes. the last time I had it when I was 11. Yeah. So I chose Reese's oh. Peanut Butter Puffs, oh. the all-time greatest cereal. Uh, here's the deal. If um, eating cereal is a symptom of clinical depression. So if you're, <laughs> as an adult, so if you're gonna do it, brighten your day a little bit. Do it with some Reese's Puffs. It is a delicious cereal. It has the great taste of chocolate. It has the great taste of peanut butter. It has the crunch of the delicious cereal. It makes your milk taste fantastic. But most of all, um, it, is, uh, it unites the Reese's people with the General Mills people. It is the great taste of corporate synergy. And isn't that what South by Southwest is really all about? Thank you. I just, Reese's hold Puffs. on. I just feel like Dave is just better at presenting than everyone else. <laughs> I don't think it's the best cereal, but you're articulate and you're smart, and that's not fair. And I just want—I just, just want to say before to you sweet, vote that I'm the only person up here that is not going to have the 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 sweet sweet uh, reunion <laughs> with their favorite. Everybody else gets to go home with this. <laughs> Me, it's a dream. I do want to point out that Dave actually did a PowerPoint presentation, but we just struck it from the program yeah, at yeah, the yeah. time. Yeah, but he had slides. Time. He had slides. <laughs> he had some interactive pieces. People could hashtag their favorite cereals and like dial into him. All I right, will here we say go. Also, Megan's and Dave's. I don't know about Baron's because he doesn't have it, but. Uh, both of their whole selling grain. points are whole grain, whole grain. and that's how oh. you know it's whack because it's like, oh, we have grains, and mine is like, nah, yeah. bro, <laughs> nah, it was marshmallows. Yeah, that's this is that. like, this contains like a quarter of a grain, I think. <laughs> One quarter of a grain <laughs> per a box. A whole quarter. Yeah. Here we go now, uh, voting for the greatest cereal of all time, the G-Coat. Dave. Uh, yeah, that's uh, right. I want to die. Baron. That's right. Dang. <laughs> thank Can't you, thank it. you, vocal <laughs> person. <laughs> Quavo Megan. from the back. Megan. Yeah, sir. A day took that Whoa, one. Day took right. that one home Thank with you. his presentation skills and his PowerPoint <laughs> deck. I don't know. All isn't right. that what? Isn't that what people who work in an office call them? Decks. Can I Here even we go. Keep uh, this? I have a question for people who for the for the powers that be. Is there another panel up here after this? How oh. long after this? Oh, it, I okay. Oh, because we're we're just we're gonna talk about religion. <laughs> this is a lightning round, ladies oh. and gentlemen, for Baron Dave. Yep. Uh, you know, tech is a big part of South by Southwest, but somehow the tech we want never comes, right? Uh, but there is a there is a second line <laughs> that walked is. all the way from New Orleans to Austin just this morning to stand outside and play some f***ed <laughs> up drums while we <laughs> discuss this next topic. Which would you rather have, an invisibility cloak or a teleportation device. Okay. Here's a caveat though, because it's Sunday. You can only teleport to places that you've been before, oh. uh, a la Fallout 3. You can't oh. go some, you can't teleport to a joint that you didn't actually okay. physically walk okay. with so your no feet. So no baby Hitler is what they mean. No baby Hitler killer. Yep, so uh, this is for Baron and Dave. Uh, take it away, this is a lightning round, so hit it quick, hit All it right. quick. Disregard. Oh Who my God. You that go guy first, just Dave? teleported I'll go to first. right behind I'll go first. me. Uh, I, first of all, I would say He's no. He's not been here before. <laughs> Go ahead. I am pro-teleportation device. I am anti-invisibility cloak because um, I, it might put me in a situation where I might find out, uh, like, hear what my friends think of me, and I don't, yeah, they that's, don't, like I don't want that. They don't like you. I don't think they do. Um, and uh, a, a, a teleportation device, even if you can only use it to go to places where you've been before, it is a device that would simplify my favorite activity, which is leaving. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. God, that, you just put a twist on that that yeah. no one's ever done before. That Thank was you. amazing. Thank well you done. very much. Well done. You All right. enjoy leaving more than just not going. Yeah, so yeah. I don't have a lot of time. Okay, so. <laughs> um, yes. Invisibility cloak. Well, you know, luckily I have two friends that would also know about the cloak. I would lend it out. And the thing about a visibility cloak, unlike the teleportation device, is I can go anywhere. Now, a lot of people would be like, invisibility, I want to see someone naked. Not me. I'm going to the DMV, and I'm stealing tags. I'm stealing <laughs> tags for my license plate, because those things are very expensive. God bless seen. you, but <laughs> and seen. And seen on this I, Tennessee Williams I mean, monologue. I, I, will, I will say... <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say. I'm just, we're just gonna vote on this one. Yeah. Uh, Dave with uh, teleportation to get to GTFO. You're right, you're yes, right. Yes, the sequel right. to Get Out, GTFO. Right. 
Uh, Enthusiastic, Baron, Baron guys. going to the DMV in his invisibility cloak. Wow. Yeah, you didn't think about that DMV. Yes. All right, and then just Expelliarmus, give me some tags. Too bad I, you weren't this enthusiastic about Beto. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to point out that Dave has been clutching that box of Reese's Puffs like he thinks we might <laughs> we might confiscate it at the end of the panel. I feel like we can afford that four dollar and forty nine cent box of Reese's Puffs. That is yours. That is yours to yeah. take home. You, nice. you lost today, but yeah. that is your consolation prize. Oh, I won today. Yeah, eat it with you. <laughs> All right, uh, this is the last topic. It's amazing we got here. I'm, I'm impressed. It's amazing. I, I, I was for sure we were about to be arrested. Uh, this is for everyone on our panel. And I want to say, obviously, technology is a big thing at South by Southwest, but uh, all of us were probably uh, uh, baptized in the, in the, in the sticky uh, pool of, of uh, arcade video games. Sure. I'm a huge gamer. I'm sure that the rest of you are as well. And I love a nice standing arcade game. So if you've got one token, one free token, which arcade game do you play? You've got one game, one chance to make it count. What game do you play? We're going to start with the Aster and come this way. So hit it. Marvel vs. Capcom 1, best video game of all time. Nothing's better. It puts this, your Street Fighter universe and your comic book universes together. It's perfect. The end. I won, go. <laughs> Spidey. Okay. Um, I am playing Miss Pac-Man. Yes. Everybody loves a female protagonist. She has a bow. There's some romance. She's eating good food, but then there's also a pretzel for some reason. Um, she even dies in a cool way. Instead of just like crumbling, she swoons like she's in, gone with the wind. Uh, I think she's incredible. I also think sometimes she looks like, you know, like an egg eating a uterus. Um, <laughs> she's just a female feminist icon and I love her. And if you vote against her, you don't support women. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, I'm also in the fighting game universe. I'm going with Mortal Kombat 2. Oh. Not 1 or Finish 3. Mortal him. Kombat 2, which I enjoy because I was a master at this. Now, some of you aren't me, but if your mom got married at the Circus Circus Hotel Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, and then Winning. you went to the floor that's an arcade game, put a quarter on Mortal Kombat 2, and then a Korean kid with an entourage shows up and you kick his butt in it, and his entourage has to hold him back, you know you're really good. <laughs> so for me, it's just reliving the, the greatest moment of my life of someone who can't really fight wanting to fight me for real. I like that it says finish him and then Scorpion's on his knees like, I have to blow him, no! <laughs> yeah, you think, you think the instructions are for Baraka to finish him, but the instructions are for Scorpion. Finish oh, him! Scorpion. Oh, I can't believe I lost another fight! <laughs> Scorpion's like, well, if I have to do this, oh get over God. here! <laughs> right, there you go. Why? <laughs> I, I, I'm never going to live past today. Dave. I went with Asteroids. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's stark. It's austere. <laughs> it makes you have to use your imagination to answer questions like, who, who am I? And who's the other little spaceship shooting dots at me? Why is any of this happening? Um, <laughs> Asteroids never stops being interesting because it never starts being interesting. <laughs> oh, my stuff. God. Oh, this is a tough one. All right, here we go. <laughs> Uh, one free token. Which arcade game do you play? Is it Asteroids? It's not. It's not. Let's be honest. It's not. It's not. A lot That's of Frogger okay. fans. A lot of is, Frogger fans. Is, is it uh, Mortal Kombat 2? All right. Some is people. it Ms. Pac-Man? Oh, wow. Damn. You guys don't, just trying to get, you just trying to get some of that strange later. Aisha, is, don't do this. Don't, is it, you can't vote. Don't vote. <laughs> it's Megan. Obviously, it's Megan. Obviously, it's Megan. Uh, uh -oh. I have not been keeping track of who's been winning because I've just been wildly entertained and I'm also <laughs> moderately buzzed. But I feel like we all won today. I think so. Uh, during this conversation. I, this is my, I'm not, I am not lying. This is my third great debate and I didn't realize how much I love the company of other comedians because for most of my stand-up career, I was actively avoiding their company. Mm -hmm. But this, this, this was like, man.
I'm a big fan of all of you. Aww, so if you're you. a big fan of all these people, you might want to find out where you can see them at South by Southwest during the con. So from Yasser coming this way, tell us what else you're doing at the convention besides drinking at Lucille's in 45 minutes. Uh, drinking at Lucille's in 45 minutes, and then I have to go home. So if you don't see me there, <laughs> it's been fun. What, and what, I love what? you. What would? Ping, 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 ping. Get them up. Uh, okay, Hagen. Uh, I will be on Todd Berry's podcast at 6 p.m. at Esther's Follies. He's already sending me bullying DMs. Um, and then I have two more shows at Esther's Follies Monday and Tuesday night. I'm here a long time. Give me weed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so in love with all of you right now. Baron. Uh, tonight I have a show at Esther's Follies at 10 p.m. It is a show I created called The New Negroes. Yeah. Which is going to be a TV show which Yasser is actually on. It comes yeah. out Comedy Central 8, 8, April 19th. But tonight, Esther's Follies, going to be fantastic. Me, Open Mike Eagle, Fonte is also going to be joining us for the hip-hop fans. Great. Oh, my God. Uh, Dave. Um, for the next few days, you can see me drunk on a bird scooter uh, around town. Uh, but then, third, no, Wednesday, Wednesday, I don't know what time, uh, but it's the, uh, the documentary about Lou Pearlman. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're screening that, and then I'm doing a Q&A afterwards with Joey and Lance from NSYNC. Wow. So come see us. Wow, it's going to be dark. It's a documentary about a guy who died in prison, but it'll be fun. <laughs> If Come you guys me. would like to relive the magic of this morning, you can, you can watch this <laughs> panel again. Vote a second time. Maybe you made some mistakes with your paddles. I'll tell you who didn't make a mistake with his paddles. That guy right there with the, with the beer and the two paddles in row three. Uh, you can visit SciFiWire.com. My name is Aisha Tyler. I cannot emphasize how much I enjoyed this. Give it up for Yasser Lester, Megan Gailey, Baron Vaughn, Dave Holmes. You guys are the greatest. Enjoy your South by.